What's the real word, y'all? So for starters, I hope you guys like the intro. It was a huge gift from a fan of the channel, Gator McCluskey. Uh, I'm going to drop a link to his uh, channel in the comments below. Uh, and I appreciate you, my man. I'll definitely be using it whenever I can moving forward. I loved it. Um, and, you know, he does uh, channel reviews. He's a big fan of Burt Reynolds, so you'll see a lot of content for him over there. I'm going to drop his stuff in the description for you guys. Again, much appreciated. Uh, as for the content for today, Mel Kuyper uh, and Todd McShay actually as well, they teamed up a little bit. They were discussing the 2023 NFL Draft, and uh, he had some pretty significant comments in terms of what the talent looks like this year compared to what he's seen in years prior. And he's pretty much outright called it a bad draft that's lacking um, high-end elite tier talent uh, and maybe talent throughout. He said he struggled to actually get to... 80 draftable prospects so far. Again, it's pretty early on in the evaluations, uh, but he said by this point in time in other drafts, he's usually up to 120, maybe 125 prospects. And so uh, that was a pretty glaring difference for me. Now, I'm not a guy that is necessarily, uh, you know, dealt deep into what Mel Kuyper has done in previous drafts. I know he puts out a pretty significant um I guess you can call it like a book, a manuscript, something like that in regards to the draftable prospects. Uh, everything from what we'll find at the Combine in the pro days um, up to what he's significantly breaking down in terms of technical ability, physical talent, traits that they're bringing, strengths and weaknesses, all of that good stuff that we like to eat up. But uh, clearly, he's been doing this for many, many decades, um, and, and he's one of the, the renowned go-to guys when you really want to kind of understand what's going on with a prospect. As with everybody, he's not 100% perfect, so there's been guys he's clearly been wrong on. Uh, probably one of the most emphasis is Patrick Mahomes, who he thought would be a bust in you know, we're talking about a guy who's now had multiple MVPs. He's uh, reached the AFC Championship, um, you know, going, I want to say, five plus times now uh, out of, what, six seasons. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is from that standpoint. But I do uh, have a pretty strong pulse on what's going on with the NFL draft. And from a lot of scouts, it does generally appear that people aren't necessarily extremely high on this draft. If you need a quarterback, it's great, but even then, they only have four uh, first-round quarterbacks this year. It's a step up from last year where Todd McShay said he only had Kenny uh, Pickett as the uh, only round one rated quarterback that can go. Um, now, what does that mean? Obviously, he highlighted some things like prospects leaving early at the Senior Bowl and you know missing out on pro days, uh, skipping out on combines, different things of that nature that uh, you know take a little bit of a toll on maybe what they can investigate and perceive uh, from a talent outside of what's on tape. Uh, but when we're talking pure talent, it seems like it's one of those draft classes that could be up there and uh, history is one of the worst uh, after we see what the time spent looks like in the NFL. And uh, I think the comparison I've seen a lot of people making in the comments was uh, maybe the 2013 draft class. Um, and I want to say that's the one that maybe had like EJ Manuel and some guys like that in it uh, that ultimately extremely underwhelmed. I don't think you really see anybody of significance out of that draft class. Still in NFL, could be wrong off the top of my head. I can't really remember too many people, so I guess that's saying something. Um, but from that standpoint, yeah. Uh, Mel Kuyper, 80 draftable prospects. Todd McShay said at this point in time he only even has 14 first rounders. Um, which, again, is still pretty, pretty significant. Some of the top names that come to mind off the top of my head when we're talking about, you know, potential elite talent. Um, we have uh, Will Anderson from Bama. Uh, and then after that, maybe you're talking about like C.J. Stroud and uh, um, Bryce. Uh, again, from Bama, but I mean, outside of that, you don't have an undisputed elite tackle. You have some guys that you love, Skoronsky, uh, we're talking Paris, um, and then there's there's more so later round guys that have, you know, extreme physical traits that you love uh, and maybe need to piece some things together. There's not a center worth the first round draft grade necessarily right now. Um, there's not a guard that's going to blow you away. There's linebackers that are very interesting and they either have experience, uh, high levels of versatility, um, 
or they have the, the instincts that you feel like you can develop around. Uh, and then same thing with the safeties. You don't have anybody that's in the, the mold of a Jamal Adams um, or anything like that that's coming out. So I can't say that they're necessarily wrong. I mean, it's not like I do this for a living. So I'm really relying on a lot of what I've seen, who I've, who I've spoken to. But even Daniel Kelly, who I had on, uh, former Jets pro scout, and he still does uh, significant work in the draft community. Even he wasn't extremely high. Now, uh, he's a little bit more polarizing. He had high grades on guys like Cody Mock uh, that other guys aren't necessarily looking at within, you know, the top 15 or so picks. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I still think his opinion is just as, uh, you know, important as anybody else's that's going on to kind of build the full picture. So what does that mean for the Jets? This is already a draft class where I felt like trading down might be a huge opportunity. And uh, hearing this from Mel Kuyper, hearing this from Todd McShay uh, in regards to uh, what they are thinking the talent level looks like, it makes sense that maybe you try to get as many shots of the dice as you can uh, for this particular draft. I mean, unless there's somebody you really, really love sitting there at 13, it makes sense to go and try to pick up maybe an extra second or a third, uh, a future pick for next year when you know the talent should be significantly better, uh, ideally anyways. Um, but I mean, I, I guess one of the final thoughts from, from Mel Kuyper, though, which kind of rounded everything out nicely, was he still mentioned, even though he considers it to be a, a, a draft that's lacking talent, maybe even a bad draft, uh, if we dare to call it that, he said teams uh, that have very good scouting departments, they can still have a good draft in what appears to be a bad draft on paper. Um, and I think that does ring a strong bell. I mean, you don't need to necessarily try to hit Hall of Famers every single class, but if you can still keep building into the core of what your team is going to be or into the strengths and weaknesses that you have, whatever your team building philosophy looks like, as long as you don't have, um, uh, you know, undisputed uh, busts that are coming out of your draft and think the 2020 draft class uh, for Joe Douglas, where we're really leaning on Makai Beck and have a strong turnaround just to say that he made out OK, um, then we should do fairly, fairly well. But I would expect a lot of trade down conversations to ramp up and you know a lot of this is going to be dependent on Aaron Rodgers uh potentially Derek Carr and you know what kind of draft capital we end up giving up if we do need to trade to acquire uh the quarterback we think can lead our franchise to the Super Bowl this season um but I don't know let me know what your guys' thoughts are uh I know by now a lot of us are diving a lot more heavily into the draft so if you guys feel there's a difference of opinion, you do love this draft class and what it offers, especially on the high end, uh, or maybe a lot of skills at the low end, let me know. Um, and <laughs> you guys know there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, a lot of videos dropping later on about you know scouting reports, talents that are coming out, hidden gems, connections uh, that are being made to New York Jets. So either way, appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you again. Peace.